Inner Confirmation for Outer Manifestations, by Richard Dodds, Chapter 1, Inner Confirmations for Outer Manifestations, I still remember that moment clearly driving in the slightly dim tunnel, I cruised along at a comfortable speed, slightly lulled by the grey tunnel walls that passed me in a blur, I had driven this route probably hundreds of times, but today was different suddenly, in that one single moment. I experienced a deep and profound sense of inner knowing, a strong sense of inner peace came over me, assuring me from within that everything was alright, and has always been, this powerful knowing came from the inside, I felt a sense of oneness, of being at one with myself and with everything else in the universe, I felt light and in perfect harmony with everything, there was nothing that had to be changed and everything was perfect just the way it was in that moment. I became the universe as I emerged from the tunnel, I continued to be awash in those wonderful feelings unlike anything I had ever experienced before, on some level, those feelings felt vaguely familiar to me, I recall feeling them in the encounter I described in the magic feeling, yet this inner knowing went way deeper than my previous encounter from almost a decade ago, more than just plain good feelings, they came in the form of an inner knowing, an inner confirmation. It was as if something clicked for me on the inside, and I knew then with utmost certainty that I was part of a benevolent universe. In that moment I also knew all the truths of the universe I have been studying to be true in the weeks that followed I read up on similar kinds of spiritual experiences. Abraham Maslow would have called them peak experiences while ancient spiritual masters often refer to them as sartorial experiences moments of profound illumination peace and inner knowing, regardless of what they are called, I am greatly humbled and thankful to have that experience of inner confirmation since that moment in the tunnel, I've had many happy moments in my life and also a few less than, happy moments which constantly remind me of the creative powers we are bestowed with, my life continues to unfold with a great sense of ease and flow that astonishes even me and I continue to be humbled by the great reception of this series of spiritual books, what started out as a personal, heartfelt letter to one friend to help him improve the conditions of his own life turned into a series of 10, as of this writing, best-selling books on the subject of manifestation in modern times, clearly these books have struck a chord with many readers who are recognizing their own creative powers and learning how to apply these age. Old techniques in the age of social media I remember how I just wanted to get the word out when I first started writing these books. The first decade of my spiritual journey was filled with countless challenges, setbacks and disappointments, some of which I described in my other books. Thankfully I did not give up, I stuck around, I walked away from these spiritual teachings many times, but came back to them each time round. The longest I was away from them was a few years, and those years were just awfully lifeless. I felt very little joy, and had little to look forward to. I just wanted to add this note at the beginning of my 11th book to let you know that you too, should not give up. The universe is always trying to send you nudges to move you in the direction of your greatest good, no matter how hopeless the outer physical situation seems, whether it is financial relationship or health setbacks you're recovering from, those are already in the past as we speak, a new and more desired reality can always be created from this moment forward, as Seth says, your point of power is in the present, all of your power is concentrated in the now, think of everything you know now, and are learning about now, that you didn't know back then. Your life can only get better with all this new knowledge from this point I say this because had I believed in my own physical reality back then, had I taken everything I experienced with my five senses at face value, I would probably have given up and committed suicide in sadness. I understand today that physical reality is merely an illusion and a reflection of our own inner states which we carry around all the time. What a foolish thing it would have been if I had ended my physical life early, because I would not be around to experience all of this magic and miracles in my continually unfolding life. So hang in there, and be sure to commit yourself to applying these tips and techniques to your life. If so many of my readers can do it, so can you.
There is no limit to how good life can get. What I have attempted to do with each of these books is to touch on a separate piece of the manifestation puzzle. Why are there so many pieces of the puzzle? You may ask, why does manifestation seem so complicated? It is not, and I can assure you that most of the complications arise from our own stuck stubborn ways of thinking and our inabilities to get past them. Therefore, Learning how to manifest effectively is really about learning how to let go of unwanted roadblocks and limiting beliefs in the process. Rather than learning something totally new, it's about letting go rather than picking up more new stuff. An effective, conscious manifester walks around with very little emotional baggage. I started on my manifestation journey not knowing that I was carrying a ton, probably several tons, of emotional baggage around all the time. I looked years older than my age and felt constantly moody, dissatisfied and tired. All of that emotional baggage was stopping my energy and weighing me down without me even realizing it. The funniest thing was that I tried to practice all these techniques and apply them while holding on to my excess baggage. I even tried to justify my negative feelings, reasoning that since I was doing so much positive spiritual work on the outside. It was all right to feel those negative feelings on the inside. Little did I know that the universe picks up on the sum total of our thoughts and feelings, and not just the positive ones. As I began to let go of my emotional baggage piece by piece, I felt lighter than I had been in years. My mood improved and things started happening in my life. I was gradually stepping into my new reality. Today. I am at a place where the universe uses me as a conduit to get this message out to people. I am often in awe at how everything I write comes so easily to me, because writing, just like everything else, is a form of creative manifestation. I am literally helping to bring the words on this page into their physical form from the ethereal world. What amazes me is how effortless this whole process is, and how page after page gets filled up with these positive. Uplifting words that have made an impact on the lives of thousands of readers around the world, but I know that I too am part of the grander, greater, and more beautiful scheme of things. Perhaps the best advice I could give before we start on our journey would be this: quit worrying about whether you are doing things right or whether you are on the right track. That was one of my primary worries I constantly grappled with when I was on the seeker's path. I was always second guessing myself. Wondering whether I was moving towards my goals when I chose to do this instead of that, I was worried about lost opportunities. But I need not have worried at all, because when we relax and just allow things to happen one step at a time, the universe always sweeps us along effortlessly and powerfully in a way that most delights us. Somewhere along the way, I set deep intentions to be a writer and teacher. The universe is now making these intentions come true in the most fulfilling and rewarding ways for me, just not in the ways I originally envisioned many years ago. And so it is the same with your life. Somewhere along the way, you have set deep intentions to live your best life. Your best life has already been lined up for you in the moment you asked for it, just as the universe lined up this series of books for me to write, even to go as far as telling me what to write in each of them. In the same way, the universe has lined up your good for you and is trying to tell you in the gentlest possible way how you can live that life. It can't force you to live it though, so you will need to let all your preconceived notions, fears, negative thoughts and feelings go in order to step into what the universe has immaculately planned for you. The rest, as they say, will happen by itself. Chapter 2 You, an energy reader? I had always seen myself as a very logical and scientific person. I spent a good half of my life receiving a Western, scientific education grounded in inquiry and logic. Later during my postgraduate studies, I found myself steeped in the study of statistics and psychometrics. Like many others, I believed that the intellectual mind and logic was the be-all and end-all of everything. I thought it held the keys to everything we needed to know to have a good life, and had all the answers for humanity. The colleagues I've met and worked with believed deeply in the same as well. We were proud of our own intellectual knowledge and thrilled by the tools we had at our disposal and so it is no surprise that when I first started on my spiritual journey, 
I chose to stay away from esoteric books on subjects related to energy centers, chakras or the reading of energy fields. I found myself adopting a more pragmatic and scientific view of away from any of those new age, energy stuff. But the more I delved into the study of these metaphysical truths, the more I realized how each and every one of us was always perceiving, translating and moving energy, whether we liked it or not to my scientific mind. The idea of us working with energy sounded foreign and abstract, yet at the most fundamental scientific level, it is the truth. We are constantly interacting with the energy fields around us. Yet these concepts still sounded like they belong to the realm of the new age, the stuff of psychics or energy healers. Therefore for the first half of my spiritual journey, I avoided using similar words and concepts to describe what I was doing, preferring to go for more scientific and relatable analogies instead a few things occurred along the way which sparked a change in direction for me. One of them was the spiritual experience which you read about in the previous chapter, in which I was suddenly given a glimpse of the entire universe from a macro perspective. Apart from that experience, I had many other encounters on a daily basis in which I would feel incredible feelings of momentum, peace and joy rush over me. I would literally feel a sense of forward moving momentum, of being propelled forward energetically. I could feel these interesting sensations swirling all over me, and these sensations deepened as I continued with my spiritual practice at some point in time, I decided to take a closer look at all of this phenomenon, while I had previously dismissed them as mere pleasant sensations and good feelings under my skin, I now know that they are something more, they point to something deeper, they are in fact, my own perceptions and translations of the energy field we are all immersed in, they are representations of how I am literally perceiving the energy field around me, these feelings are letting me know whether I am aligned with the universal flow or setting myself up against it as I became increasingly aware of my feelings and paid more attention to them, I began to shift more of my conscious waking awareness inwards, I began to notice the subtle details in these sensations. Much as how we notice subtle details in a piece of fabric the longer we observe it. These are sensations that have always been there but largely ignored by me in favor of an outer directed perspective. For the first time in my life, I was really turning inwards and taking a closer look at what happened in my inner state. I was scrutinizing and picking up on the subtle sensations of my inner state, and learning to tell from moment to moment how I felt. I was picking up on the cues that the universe was constantly sending me all of this came as a huge surprise to me as I did not know that we had been bestowed with such a rich, inner spiritual world. I had always thought that there was nothing on the inside, and that it merely consisted of a series of feelings and physical sensations. Individuals who meditate for the first time often complain of nothing but darkness on the inside. There's nothing in there they say when told to turn their conscious awareness inwards, but I now know that these physical sensations are more than just mere feelings, they are more than mere byproducts of our thoughts, these physical sensations hold the keys to our inner world, when we learn how to notice and interpret these physical sensations, we are literally reading and feeling energy before I reach this place of new understanding. I had thought that the feeling and reading of energy was reserved only for the intuitive or gifted. I thought only spiritual masters had that ability. Indeed, individuals with a strong sense of intuition or energy healers often speak of listening to that inner voice within or receiving inner guidance. Over time, these individuals have developed ways of getting messages from their inner and higher selves, which is no different from perceiving subtle differences in the energy field. While modern science has dismissed guidance obtained in this manner as unreliable and baseless, I am beginning to get excited by all the possibilities. If we all learn to live in this manner, a lot of the perceived issues that plague humanity will suddenly fall away overnight. Are you starting to get intrigued by the implications of all this? It means that all of us are constant perceivers and translators of energy, whether we realize it or not. It means that all of us have the ability to work with and directly shape the energy fields around us, whether we consider ourselves to be intuitive, perceptive or gifted in this area. 
It is a basic human trait. If you have felt pleasant sensations swirling around your body while you meditated, or just a general sense of lightness and joy, you have what it takes to deepen your practice through the techniques described in this book. I am further encouraged by the stories of shamans and indigenous cultures who have not lost touch with this side of themselves. While many of us in the modern world would consider these indigenous tribes as backwards or uneducated, I see it as living testimony that one does not need to be knowledgeable or worldly in the conventional sense of the word to live these principles. As mentioned, it is a basic human ability and once we awaken to it, the possibilities are endless. This forms the basic premise of the book you're holding in your hands right now. We are going to shine the torch inside and take a good look at our own inner states. It is a basic premise which I have been exploring in my previous few books in which I constantly remind readers of the need to do the inner work, but this book goes beyond all that, it shines a light on what is on the inside so you can notice the richness and beauty that is going on in there, it shows you how to change what is on the inside so that your outer reality can mirror and match up to it, it shows you how to step into a new desired reality, by paying greater attention to the nudges and impulses that are always sent to you by the universe even if you have always considered yourself to be a scientific and pragmatic individual staying away from all this energy stuff, it is still going to be a fun ride. In writing this book, I have stayed away from the conventional framework of describing energy in terms of chakras and the energy centers. The purpose of this is to show you how I arrived at my own understanding of this material. I want to take you step by step through the process of how I made sense of all this phenomenon so that you can arrive at your own personal understanding of it, instead of forcing some external framework upon yourself. Nothing is more valuable than reaching a place of new perspective and understanding through your own personal experience how does reading and feeling energy relate to the study of manifestations? Some of you may think, all I want is my stuff. I don't care about all this energy stuff well, if you followed the techniques and exercises outlined in all my previous books, you are already well on your way to great success, but it is my sincere belief that if you want to deepen your study and understanding of this subject matter, if you want to alive your full potential as a free-willed creative being, then this next step is mandatory, only through mastery of your inner state can you achieve mastery over your outer reality. Since as I've mentioned many times, your outer reality simply matches up to your inner state. Most people have only a vague and nebulous understanding of what really goes on on the inside. They don't even know how their inner state is like whether it is clear or whether it needs some housekeeping. After reading this book and going through the exercises, you will have a clear mental picture of what your inner state is like. You'll also learn how to interpret the impulses and guidance that your inner higher self is always trying to send you. I'm confident that you'll end this book as a more intuitive and spiritual person, and that you will place way more emphasis on these feelings impulses you're receiving. All of these are key in the manifestation process. Manifestation is nothing more than bringing things from the non-physical spiritual plane into the physical plane. But we cannot be effective manifestors unless we know what currently exists on our spiritual plane. How is our inner state like? Is it constantly in a state of turmoil and worry? Is it constantly tumultuous? Is it affected by what goes on around us? Is it filled with lots of drama and negative emotions? Most people consider all of this as natural. They accept the ebb and flow in their emotions as natural and have come to see it as life. Perhaps this ambivalent feeling can be best summarized in the saying, life's just like that don't you sense a feeling of resignation in that saying? Resignation is different from a feeling of deep peace and acceptance. A feeling of resignation means you don't like many of the things that are going on in your life but perceive yourself as powerless to change them. A feeling of peace and acceptance means you are truly at one with everything in your life and wishes for nothing to be different. There is a great difference between the two inner states most people walk around with a sense of forced or faked acceptance. They say, oh it's alright if things don't turn out the way I want them to, I accept it, but that is only at the level of their physical words. What are they really saying or feeling on the inside? Very often, if you could have a peak glimpse of their inner state, 
you'll find that they're actually not truly all right with whatever is going on. An inner war is constantly raging inside of them where they're trying to fight against outer reality and trying to change many of the things that are going on in their world. These people walk around with a sense of great injustice and the need to continually correct others' perceptions that do not match up with theirs. Sometimes this manifests as a sense of feigned resignation or acceptance, but at other times it can also manifest as other types of nasty behavior, such as picking upon individuals who cannot fight back. We sometimes witness this type of perverse behaviors around us. These individuals have developed their own psychological coping mechanisms to make up for the perceived injustice or unfairness in their world, by being mean to others instead. Needless to say, the emotional toil which they are under does not serve them well in the long run if you want to be an effective manifester, you have to give up the need to be right, you have to place feeling good, and maintaining a joyful inner state far higher in importance and priority than anything else in your life. This means cultivating the discipline to walk away from disagreements if you have to, to stop venting about unwanted situations if you have to no matter how difficult it is to do so in the heat of the moment. Because of our social conditioning, we often feel addicted to venting or the need to instantly react to arguments. There is an addiction in our culture to winning and proving that we are right. But all of it comes at a cost. It causes our inner states to become tumultuous and inconducive for manifestations. We waste energy in things that are inconsequential in the long run. We are only hurting our own creations. The powerful premise of this book is that if you can place your own well-being and your own good feelings above all else in your life, then everything else in your life straightens itself out. If you take care of your own inner state, nothing else matters. Your good will come to you in even greater ways than you can ever imagine, and still more will be added unto you. It all starts with understanding your own inner state. Chapter 3, Your Starting Point for Successful Manifestations Just for the next few minutes, stop everything you're doing and turn your conscious awareness inwards. Take it away from where it has always been, on people, events and circumstances on the outside of yourself to the inside of yourself. Place your attention on the inside. Make a mental note of how you currently feel on the inside. For most of us, this will be the first few times in our lives when we really turn and take a good look at what's happening on the inside. And it sure feels weird taking a closer look at our inner state involves using a whole different set of perception skills. While we use our five senses to perceive our outer world, the same senses do not apply here to the inner world. Instead, all we are left with when trying to feel our way through our inner world is a mix of interesting bodily sensations and feelings. Since we are still so attached to our physical bodies, most people feel these as sensations in different parts of their body, a lump in their throat, or a sense of heaviness in their chest, or a general sense of lightness and joy whatever you may be feeling at the moment. Make a mental note of it. Now if you are doing this for the first time, Words to describe the feelings will not come easily, you'll not be able to describe them exactly, just as how you struggle to find the right words to describe the taste of red wine which you just sipped, but stick with this exercise over time and it'll get easier and easier for you, I'm not asking that you describe your inner state in words, although that is certainly what many will be tempted to do. We have been so conditioned to use physical words to describe our inner emotions and feelings what can actually be described in physical terms turns out to be only a very small subset of the emotions which we can feel. For example, don't we find ourselves reverting back to labeling our feelings in the same old ways? Feelings such as joy, happiness, anger, or sadness, those are some of the common feelings that we go through every single day. But what about all the feelings in between which are indescribable? What about feelings for which there are no words to adequately describe? These feelings are still there, just that we cannot properly express them in words to others. Another objection that may come up as you attempt to do this exercise is the familiar but there is nothing there. Beginning students of meditation, when asked to close their eyes and turn their attention inwards, are often unable to sit still for long without their stream of thoughts somehow returning to objects. 
people and events on the outside. Their reasoning is that there is nothing on the inside to focus on. Everything is just bleak darkness and emptiness. This is because we are still trying to use our five senses to perceive the inner world. But the inner world cannot be perceived through our five senses. If you use your traditional sense of sight to see the inner world, of course it'll all be dark because there is no physical place which you can set your sights upon. In the same manner, there is no physical location which you can place your nose to smell, and no physical location which you can reach out to touch. The closest to using your sense of touch to feel the inner world would be to feel the physical sensations in different parts of your body. That's why most people often start there. As it is the easiest place to start another helpful tip would be to close your eyes as you tune into your inner state to cut out as much of the outside input as possible. While keeping your eyes closed, focus on your breathing and feel the sensations in different parts of your body. As I described in my other books, most people will almost instantly start to feel goosebumps running all over their body and a sense of energy shoot up their spine. They will start to feel pleasurable sensations running all over them. This is our perception of the inner state using our sense of touch. Our inner states are not the goosebumps or the energetic feelings themselves. Rather, these feelings and goosebumps are our translations and perceptions of this energy. Congratulations, if you have made it this far, you have taken the first step to reading your own energy wasn't that easy for you? It is a natural ability all of us are born with, but seems to have forgotten over time. By just taking a little effort and awareness to turn inwards, we can experience miraculous sensations and feelings at any point of the day. What you have just experienced is a small piece of the energetic essence of who you really are. Most people cannot maintain these good feelings for long because soon, the outer pressures of modern life will cause them to turn their awareness to the outside again. They'll soon be back in the daily grind. But know that whether your attention is turned outwards or inwards, your inner state is always there. It does not vanish simply because you are not placing any attention on it, and your inner state is the one that determines the results of your outer manifestations. If you wish to be a powerful manifester, you must be zealous about tending to your inner state. It's as simple as that back to the exercise we were trying a few moments ago. Just for now, close your eyes and focus on your inner state. How are you feeling on the inside? Don't try to find precise words to describe how you are feeling. Instead, just notice how you are feeling. Observe the feeling or feelings. For example, I can be looking at a tree and just noticing observing it. I know I'm looking at a tree, even if I'm not narrating or describing what I am seeing. In the same way, notice and observe your inner state without trying to describe what you are noticing. There is no need to put words to what you notice. Instead, just notice what is there. Also do not try to change what is there. Just let everything that is currently there be all right. This is your starting point. There is great value in this starting point because it shows you where your manifestations are currently going. It took me many years to finally realize that the inner feeling I was walking around with and considered to be normal was actually a sickening feeling of fear. Therefore, I just want you to notice whatever you are feeling on the inside and don't label it. The moment we label something, we feel tempted to judge or change it, so don't label it. Just observe it and stick with it for some people. This exercise is going to make them squirm in their seats and feel uncomfortable. You may be unable to do it. Suddenly, you may find yourself being gripped with fear of the unknown, because you have never explored this part of your being before. If a sense of fear suddenly grips you while your eyes are closed, the first thing you can do is to open your eyes and reassure yourself that everything is fine. This is one of the devious ways through which our ego works. Our ego finds it extremely difficult, if not impossible to let go and give up the need to think. The ego always wants to keep us safe based on what it knows. Therefore, when we attempt to turn to a part of ourselves that is unknown, the ego lets us know that it is not all right what you have just read in the past few pages did not come to me in a single sitting, or even a single day, week or month. 
bits and pieces of the process came to me over the period of several years, so understand that even if you are unable to complete this exercise, you can always set it aside and try again tomorrow. Don't force yourself to turn inwards and sit with your inner state if you cannot do so without feeling apprehensive. Try to overcome it gently. It took me many years to make sense of all these feelings and sensations because there really wasn't any reference point for me. There is no road map for the inner world, although the emotional scale does come really close. So when I first started on my journey, I was experiencing all these bodily sensations while meditating and found no way of applying or interpreting them. I did not know what was happening. I just knew the feelings felt good. I had no way of using this material at that time. Neither did I know the relationship of our inner state to our outer manifestations. It was only after a prolonged period of allowing that everything became clear to me. Once I gave up my need to know and dropped all my negative worries and insecurities, everything became clear for me in a swoop. Therefore give yourself some time with the exercises in this book. Just because I have written them in the same chapter does not mean you have to attempt all of them in one sitting. This is a book to be savored. Make a mental note of how you feel without attempting to judge it. For example, you may feel quite happy and light at the moment. But is it all a feeling of happiness and lightness? Do you feel completely happy and light? Be persistent at asking yourself this question while observing your inner state. Once again, we are not trying to change things but simply observing things. We are attempting to observe our starting point for most people. Several persistent rounds of self-inquiry and observation will reveal the surprising or not so surprising. Answer to be no. They'll realize that while they thought they felt quite neutral on the inside, there is actually a slight nagging feeling of fear or worry. There is perhaps a 10% or 20% feeling of fear or worry. Sometimes I like to use numbers to quantify the level of something I'm feeling. This is similar to the use of subjective units of distress, SUD, in healing work, in which an individual is asked to give a number on the SUD scale before the healing intervention takes place. And after the healing intervention takes place, I have found that putting a number to gauge the level of my subjective feelings is useful for me, so I know if I have dealt with it successfully. Since everything happens on the inside with no external reference point, it is easy for someone to completely forget that he ever had the pain or fear in the first place, as everything seemed to have shifted instantaneously, very often. Patients often go as far to deny that they had those sensations in the first place. Therefore, stating in SUD before the intervention and then comparing it to the number after the treatment offers some external validation that the intervention worked the same applies here. I would usually ask myself out of 100%, how many percent of my inner state is fear, or how many percent of my inner state is worry, or guilt? Because I have been doing this for quite some time, I am able to identify the feelings quite quickly. Sometimes it is necessary to use a phrase or even a sentence to describe these unwanted feelings, such as the I don't want to do it but I have to feeling. So it's up to you how you want to put a handle on and describe these inner states. Now this is an important bit if you manage to get that 10% or 20% fear were e guilt insecurity or any other negative feeling down to zero, your manifestations are settled, they are done, once and for all, if you are able to get those 10% negative feelings down to zero, your manifestations are all taken care of and settled by the universe, it is done, you can stop reading this book and not worry about anything else in the world, if you can get it to remain at 0% for most of the time, then things get even better because you will be living in a state of constant inspiration and alignment. How do you begin to push bring number down to zero? Quite simply, by noticing that these feelings exist, by acknowledging that these feelings exist and by becoming aware of them. Even today as I do this work, I frequently check in on my inner state and ask myself the questions above. Do I feel 100% positive and light in this very moment? If the answer is no. Then I ask myself how many percent of negative feelings am I feeling, and work from there. Do this about five times a day and observe how you feel. 
You'll notice that your percentage of negative feelings corresponds perfectly to your outer reality. A few things to note here. First, when we ask the question, do I feel 100% positive and light in this very moment, we are really asking ourselves about the current now moment. We are not asking ourselves how we feel most of the time, or for most of the day. It is also not I felt just now, or how I want myself to feel. We are really talking about that exact moment in time. Think of it as taking temperature using a thermometer. We are using the thermometer to get a now reading of the temperature, not an average reading or the reading which we would like to have. We want to be as objective in the process as the thermometer. The second thing to note is that you have to be honest with yourself when answering the question. Many readers of New Age material have a hard time admitting that they have negative feelings inside of themselves. They're in some sort of a denial, having read that negative feelings will lead to the attraction of unwanted things. This is a sticky point which I keep coming back to in all of my books, because as I've explained this is not an issue. If negative feelings really exist inside of you and you keep denying ignoring their existence, they are not going to go away and your manifestations will still be affected. Your acknowledgement of whether you have any negative feelings is not going to affect your outer manifestations. However, your repeated denial of them prevents you from working on them effectively, and that is going to affect your manifestations. Therefore, I am not asking that you dwell on these negative feelings. All that is required for you is to acknowledge if they exist, yes no, and if they do. Approximately how many percent of negative feelings are you feeling at the moment for some people? This number can be quite high. It may be more than 50% or even 100%. This means you're feeling highly worried, fearful or scared in that moment. That is all right. The important thing is to answer truthfully and not give a figure that you hope to have or think is correct. Again, no one will know about your answers here so it is all for your own reference only. If you are feeling 100% negative in the now moment, then your answer is a 100%. It does not matter what number you're currently at because once you have acknowledged that number, you can take the steps to bring it down towards zero. Sometimes I check in on my inner state and get the reading that I'm feeling largely alright, but with a 5% feeling of fear and worry. Had I not done this conscious checking in exercise, I would not have noticed these very slight feelings of fear and worry. I would not have noticed their existence because I was so focused on things that were happening to me on the outside. So this exercise has great value in that it reminds me to deal with negative feelings right here in the moment. At other times I check in on my inner state and it's obvious that I'm not feeling good, like at 100% anger, if so. I don't judge or blame myself for it, neither do I bother myself with questions of how did I get here, I'm not supposed to feel this way I simply remind myself gently that now, 100% anger is definitely not going to lead to positive manifestations in future, so why make life difficult for myself now and in the future, why suffer the distress of negative feelings now and still have unwanted manifestations in future with that realization. I instantly relax, then take the steps to realign, refocus and bring myself back to zero. The great value in this exercise is not so much in attempting to change the numbers, but to first notice what they are. This is your starting point for successful manifestations. Chapter 4 All you have lived is valuable. Once you have successfully identified your starting point, we can start taking positive steps to change it. It does not matter where you are at the moment or where you have been. As mentioned, we are not even interested in answering the question, how did I get here in the first place? How you have gotten to this point is not important at all in the grand scheme of things. What's more important, and the only thing that matters, is where you want to go, and what you want to create from this point forward. It is the only question you need to answer, so drop the needless worries and guilt about the past. Drop any feelings of regret or wasted time. Drop the feeling that you have wasted unnecessary time, energy and effort in the past, or that you have been on the wrong path. There is really no wrong path because all of that living has culminated in the now. All of that living has resulted in the current you today. 
providing you with the much needed impetus to move forward from this point it is the same for me as well, as I look back on the journey I have taken, I don't blame myself for the supposed detours and the times when I could have taken a particular path but did not, as I've said many times, how do you know what is best for you? Our limited physical perspectives prevent us from knowing what is highest and best from us, while the ego always tries to pretend that it knows what is the best for us. However, Universal Source indeed does know what is the highest and best for us, and is constantly trying to let us towards it. The only issue is that we shut ourselves out by listening to the ego, by listening to negative or fear thoughts and by trying to rationalize and intellectualize through things, give up the need to rationalize or figure things out in the hope that you will choose the correct path. I can tell you that there's no correct path because all paths ultimately converge. Even if you choose the wrong path today, universal guidance will be there tomorrow to guide you back to your greatest good. Therefore, You'll simply go through a different set of life experiences but still ultimately end up with all the valuable lessons that you need to learn as I look back on my 10-year struggle with the law of attraction and these universal principles. Not even for a single moment have I wished that things turned out differently. It is not because I do not remember my struggles back then, or how miserable and hopeless I felt but because all of those life experiences have culminated and contributed towards the person I am today. Therefore I do not wish for a single moment that my 10-year struggle was shortened into 10 days, as I would have missed out on many important and valuable lessons. Could it have been shortened to 10 days? Could I have sidestepped the struggle completely and not have to experience it at all, instead jumping straight into my whole new desired life? Absolutely yes. All of that was optional, the struggle was completely optional, but in my case, I had to go through it to allow myself to learn the lessons within and live from a new place of understanding, therefore, I could only learn the lessons within by living out those life experiences without, which in turn clarified my understanding and caused me to fine tune my vibrations, all of that has led to this series of books, which are in turn helping millions of people out there. Do you see how wonderful the universe is? Because of all this life experience I have lived, I am now in a position to help millions of people and it is the same for you as well. Maybe you do not see yourself as a writer or teacher in the traditional sense, but every single day, you are living your life as a parent, lawyer, designer, brother, sister, mother, administrative officer, executive, all that you are living in your life right now whether the good or the bad, is adding to the sum total of your life experience. All of it is going to clarify and add on to your understanding of life itself. One day, this life experience of yours is going to help others become better parents, lawyers, designers, photographers, whatever role you choose to make a contribution in. That's why I have often mentioned that living a spiritual life does not mean walking away from whatever you have. It means making a contribution from right where you are, right in this moment. You can lead a spiritual life without having to change roles. One of my favorite stories told by Abraham Hicks is one in which a businessman lamented about losing his fortune built up over several decades, and that he would not have the time to build up that same fortune again. Abraham's response, always in line with the highest vantage point of the universe, was that all of that life experience the gentleman has lived has not come to waste. Instead, all of those experiences that the man had lived has propelled him into an even better and more powerful place to create a bigger fortune. Once again, my own life experience has shown this to be true. All of that powerful, and oftentimes intense, asking that I did early on in my path has helped to propel me forward with amazing clarity and momentum. They have culminated in the now moment, and the now moment is all that matters. This is why I encourage you to always check in to see how you are feeling this very now moment. Cultivate the habit of doing so a few times each day. Just check in and see how you are feeling this very now moment without attempting to change things the way they are. This exercise will provide you with valuable insights as doing it over the course of several days will give you an average inner state reading that will approximate your outer reality very well. 
If you find that you are constantly worried or living in negativity fear, your outer state of manifestations will reflect that as well perfectly. It follows that if you wish to change your outer reality, you have to change your inner states. When most people check in on their inner states, they find themselves carrying an incredible amount of burden, guilt and regret about past events. They walk around blaming themselves for doing or not doing this or that. For example, they may say, if only I had been more careful with my money back then, if only I had invested it carefully back then instead of splurging it, let all of those past guilts and regrets go, there is no use holding on to any of them, there is no way you can go back and change the past, so by holding on to all the guilt for one moment longer, all you are doing is to bring those negative feelings from the past back into the present moment and these negative feelings will continue to affect your future manifestations. So why allow yourself to suffer like that? Let everything about the past go. Let any blame thoughts about not taking the right action in the past go. It does not matter what you have done in the past. It matters what you are doing now in the present moment, because all of that is going to directly shape your future when you are able to effectively drop all the emotional baggage you're carrying about the past and start living in the now. You would find yourself lighter and freer. You would find yourself to be more joyous and at peace with everything around you. This is because you are no longer at odds with yourself, with who you were before. I have forgiven everyone and everything in the past, no matter how much blame, resentment or injustice I felt. Very often, the person we need to forgive the most is ourselves. I have forgiven myself for everything I have done in the past. This means making a decision to never blame myself again for anything I did in the past, and not judging myself for those actions. I have learned the lessons and it is time to move on. There is no need to keep revisiting those past negative feelings and emotions unless you want more of them in your life therefore. When you check in on your inner state and find some negative feelings there, ask yourself where these supposed negative feelings come from the past, present or the future? If they come from the past, let all of them go. I can assure you that all it takes is a decision, an intention, and some resolve. If you will say I'm done with feeling guilty about my past, I now choose to let all of that go and keep at it each time the guilt comes up. Everything will pass for you very fast. We are often unwilling to let go of past guilt feelings because we are secretly worried that if we let ourselves off the hook, we'll engage in that unwanted behavior once again. But that's an absurd solution and another way of needlessly punishing yourself. Why do you need to keep reliving those past guilt feelings and keep yourself imprisoned by them so that you will not engage in those undesired actions again? Set an intention to not act in those manners inconsistent with your highest good again. Let your guilt feelings go, and it is done. The it is done technique as taught in my book of the same name can also be used on dropping these negative feelings and beliefs. Just append it to the end of these intentions. I would advise that you take a few days or even weeks to work on this segment of the process. First. Check in on your inner state and notice how much of the negative feelings are from events that happened in the past. Let those go and be persistent at it over the course of the next few days and weeks. Remember that in letting those feelings go, we are only interested in dealing with the now feelings. By this I mean, can you let go of these negative feelings just for now? This is often a more effective way to do so than to demand that you let go of these feelings forever. Because if you can let go of them in the now, if you can be free from these negative feelings in the now, then the chances of them recurring in the future gets lesser and lesser as well. So don't set up a huge challenge for yourself by, immediately, resolving that you drop any unwanted feelings from the past once and for all. Instead, just resolve to drop them for the now, in this present moment. That is all you need to do. And it will be good enough if you'll check in on your inner state five times a day. It takes under three minutes to find a quiet place and do so. And then ask yourself how you are feeling before making a decision to drop those unwanted feelings from the past and checking in again. You would be making great strides in your manifestation journey. Let me briefly summarize the process here. Step 1. Check in on your inner state and ask yourself, in the current moment, 
approximately how many percent of negative feelings occupy my awareness, just an approximation will do, let's suppose the number is 40% step 2, ask yourself, how much of these negative feelings are from events people things that happened in my past, how much of them are due to past fears regrets unhappiness that I am carrying around, let's suppose that it's 90%, which means that almost all of your negative feelings are about events that happened in the past step 3, resolve to get that 90% down to 0, set a light intention to let all of it go in the now moment can I allow myself, just for this moment, just for now, not in the future, to stop feeling these negative feelings about the past, yes no can I allow myself, just for this moment, to let these guilt feelings go, yes no, then feel yourself letting go of those feelings. It is all right to answer either yes or no to the questions above, as a release happens no matter what answer you give. This is something I have learned from the wonderful Sedona method. Check back again on your level of negative feelings. In most cases, you will find that the percentage has decreased. Repeat steps 1, 2, 3 if necessary as many times as you like. I usually do it till I am down to zero in the now. Congratulate yourself, you are well on your way to letting go of emotional baggage from the past in the now moment. Chapter 5, Now is the only time that matters. In the last chapter, we went through a simple technique to let go of negative feelings arising from past events. When I examine my own negative feelings carried over from past events, I realize that they were mainly feelings of regret, blame and guilt, regret from not doing or doing certain things in the past, blaming myself for doing or not doing, certain things in the past, and guilt over certain courses of action I have taken. Some people live with these guilt feelings for their whole lives in a perverse attempt to punish themselves, but as I have explained earlier resolve right now not to repeat that behavior again, and let all of that guilt go, no one is punishing you but yourself, it is over. There is no need to keep reliving the pain over and over again in your imagination. As the saying goes, we are not punished for our sins but by them. All of this is going to affect your inner state and outer manifestations. So you must be willing to let them go and understand that no one out there is bent on punishing you except yourself. Two emotions are conspicuously absent from the list of negative feelings I have identified above, worry and fear. This is an interesting point to note that was quite an epiphany for me the first time I made this realization. When we worry, we are always worrying either about the present or about the future. We never worry about the past. In other words, feelings of fear and worry never come from past events, which is why you will not find yourself carrying any worry feelings about the past. Why is that so? We worried in the past because we were uncertain or fearful about our future outcomes. We did not know what the future held back then. We were scared that things would not turn out the way we wanted them to. However, once we reached a point in the future when the events or circumstances materialized, whether in a desired or undesired manner, our worries evaporated. True, we might then have to deal with the manifestation itself, but the point is that we stopped all our worrying once the event materialized and the outcome was confirmed. How is this useful to our study of manifestations? I have realized that the feeling of worry can often be so overwhelming and destructive that it destroys our inner well-being entirely. I remember being so worried and fearful as a child about all the bad things that could possibly happen to me. All that worrying took away the joy of living in the moment. It was like I hardly lived a good life all those years. Therefore, there is a possibility when you check in on your inner state that you'll find one filled with worries and fears about the future. For some people, it may be a 90% or more feeling of negative worries and fears about present and future circumstances. This is what we are going to be dealing with in this chapter. I have written quite a bit about dealing with negative worries and fears in my other books. Particularly it is done in playing in time and space, where I walk readers through the process of questioning their own worrisome thoughts. In this book, I would like to talk about another dimension of letting worrisome thoughts and fears go, and it is this now is the only time that matters. 
This is a very important realization to have when working with your negative worry thoughts about the present or future. You may feel overwhelmed and unable to drop even some of your worry thoughts at once. For you, it may seem extremely logical to worry about something, especially if an unwanted reality is looming just round the corner. For example, an individual may say, Of course I have to worry about money because I do not have enough money right now to pay my bills. Therefore I have to worry about it so I can figure out how to get more of it. That sounds perfectly logical at the level of words. But check into your inner state when a statement like that is uttered. What is the inner state of a person who makes this statement? Very likely, it would be 100% worries and fears. I was once such a person. I did not realize that in my urgent need to plan for something or to look for a solution, I was not being optimistic. Instead, I was being very negative because my inner state was entirely filled with negative worries and fears about my finances. Now is it possible to make the same statement and feel hopeful? Absolutely. When a person says I know I'm not in a good place financially, let's see what I can do to change it. Now he has moved up the emotional scale into the realm of hopefulness. So you can see how our inner state always determines our outer results. If we move up the scale once more and that same person says, where I have been does not matter, what matters is what I do from this point onward now we are really moving, because this individual's inner state has changed so much from one of 100% fears and worries, to probably only 20% fears worries and 80% expectancy, do you see how our words always mirror our inner states, don't change your words for the purpose of appearing positive on the outside. That won't work as I found out the hard way. You have to genuinely work at changing your inner state. It is the only thing that matters someone who has been fearful and worried about present circumstances in the future for a long time will find it difficult, if not impossible to stop worrying. Therefore, there is a simple mind trick that I engaged in the earlier part of my journey, and it is this. I asked myself if I was willing to stop worrying for now. Just for now, would you be willing to drop all your worries about money and finances? Not for the next hour, next day, or next week, not even for the next minute, but just for now, just for this now moment. Once you can get to a yes, the things you want will happen very quickly. An opening would have been created once I realized I could drop all my worries and fears just for now, even for a single short moment. I came to the profound realization that I was not my worries and fears. Previously, all these worry and fear thoughts overwhelmed and took control of me so much that I had come to identify myself as and with them. I had seen myself as inseparable from them. I had come to see worrying as a part of my identity. But the very moment I was able to drop those fear worry thoughts for one single moment and still exist in that moment as a separate being. I immediately saw the folly of worrying, if I could be free from worries for a single moment, why not the next moment, and the next, why not slowly extend those worry free moments longer and longer what I would encourage you to try is to let go of your negative feelings about present and future circumstances each time you check into your inner state, if you check into your inner state 5 times a day, then drop those worry fear feelings 5 times a day and no more. You can always go back to worrying and feeling fearful later on if you wanted, but for those five times a day, let them go, let them completely go and immerse yourself in the feeling of being totally free, feel yourself completely free from the bondage of all these unwanted negative feelings, and notice how light empowering it feels, you'll notice pleasant bodily sensations swirling all over you, or a bolt of intense yet gently energy shooting up your spine. Notice these feelings and really immerse in them just for the now the great secret to manifestations is that everything happens only in the now. Now is the only time that matters. This means that the now moment is the only time you have to take care of, and everything will take care of itself when the time comes. Your job is to take care of the now moment, to tend to your inner state in the now moment, and do nothing else. Everything else will be added unto you when you get there. Anytime you are not living this now moment, your attention is placed somewhere else, 
This means you're worrying or fantasizing about some future outcome. Don't fall into the same trap which so many hopeful manifestors have fallen into. What they do is to try and feel good now in an attempt to make something happen in the future. They decide what actions to take now so that something can happen in future. Can you see how they're still trying to change the future? Give up every need to change the future and just immerse yourself completely in this now moment. If in this now moment you can get yourself to feel abundant, prosperous, light, free, joyous, then everything will take care of itself when you get there. This is universal law and one of the most counterintuitive things to grasp whether we like it or not. All we have are a series of now moments. It's always the now, 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 now. When we step into our future, it will be the now for us. So we have no means of living any other way other than to live in the now. To try to live in the future is trying to do the impossible. Yet that is what so many people do when they worry. They think their worrying is going to change the future, when in fact all it does is to mess up the balance of the now, and therefore mess up their manifestations, give up any need to predict or to change the future. If you'll make feeling good now and maintaining a good inner state now your utmost priority, things will happen for you so quickly that time does not matter. Divine interventions can happen so quickly and completely that they defy any logical explanations of time. This is what I have experienced over and over again. It is what you can experience too if you immerse yourself wholeheartedly in the study of this material. Two major objections always come up when I suggest this way of living. The first is, but my problems will not go away if I live this way. Aha, uh -huh. that is a manifestation stuck point, which I discuss in the 95-5 code, and a core limiting belief. My response to that is how do you know if you examine and contemplate this question for yourself? How do you know your problems would not go away if you live this new way? Is it your higher self or ego speaking? If you have been someone who has been steeped in worry since the beginning of time, how could you possibly know that this way of living will not work out since you have not lived this reality? That is a good point to ponder. Second, let's suppose that you're right for a moment. Let's suppose that we lived in a fatalistic universe, we do not, and that your problems really would not go away even if you stopped worrying about them. If that's the case, then why worry about them in the first place? If your problems were going to occur materialize whether you worried about them or otherwise, then why choose the worrying route and end up with optional, needless, and necessary suffering from now till the materialization? Why worry about something you cannot change? Whichever way you look at it, I have never found a good reason for worrying about the present future. Fortunately though, we do not live in a fatalistic universe. We live in a universe where we continually create our realities through our inner states. This means, as illogical as it sounds, that if you stop worrying, your perceived problems will go away by themselves. Desired conditions will replace the undesired conditions that have been in your life. Those undesired conditions were there simply and only because they have been perpetuated through your stuck inner states. Are you beginning to see the possibilities in all of this now? I still feel excited over this realization even after repeating and saying it so many times, and I feel a rush of energy all over me each time I teach it. Your outer reality is held in place by your inner state. Whatever inner state you are perpetuating results in a corresponding outer state. Worries and fears create an unwanted, worrisome outer state. If you want all those things you worry about to fall away by their own accord, stop the worrying first on the inside. Stop the worrying even just for a single now moment, and then gradually you can do it in the next now moment and so on. That is all you have to do. For the rest of your life, you'll be surprised at how much mental energy you free up when you do not worry. And when all those worrisome thoughts are replaced by light, positive, joyous thoughts that create your desired reality when you live in this way and only tend to one now moment after another, you put yourself in alignment to receive everything you have asked for and more. Chapter 6, Your Inner Feeling of Forward Momentum Those who have read my other books will know that the first half of my manifestation journey was characterized by a deep sense of constant fear. Worry and negativity, 
If I had done the checking and exercise described in the first half of the book for myself back then, I would not even have noticed that sick and the gut feeling I was constantly carrying around with me, simply because I had come to accept it as normal. As a result, I was often pale and sickly as a child. Negative emotions when carried for too long in the physical body often result in health issues which are also a type of physical manifestations. The moment I decided to drop all those negative feelings and emotions, whether they were about the past, present or future, my physical body corrected itself and returned to its natural healthy state. Therefore, these teachings are really about a dropping of unwanted baggage that weigh us down, rather than the picking up of new techniques and skills. They are about allowing rather than getting when I was constantly feeling worried and scared during the first half of my journey. Universal goodness just could not get through to me, as powerful as these universal forces are. I could not feel the impulses and nudges from the universe, not because the universe stopped sending them to me, but because I was so preoccupied by my own fears and worries that I totally drowned them out. I was trying to make all these manifestation techniques work in spite of my own fears and worries. Instead of trying to make all these manifestation techniques work in the absence of my own fears and worries, the latter is the easier approach. If you want these techniques to work for you, then you must work towards ridding your own fears and worries first before applying any technique. No one can do that for you except yourself, because no one has the ability to think on your behalf. This principle, when thoroughly grasped, is very powerful because it means that no one can create anything on your behalf or decide on your behalf. You have the ultimate freedom to create as a free will being I first started receiving impulses and nudges from the universe once I freed up some of the mental capacity I previously used for negative feelings and thoughts. When I was feeling 100% worried and negative, no impulses and good feelings could come through to me. I was perpetuating my stuck states over and over again without realizing it, but here's the good news, the moment I lowered that percentage even by a little bit, the moment I went from 100% negative feelings to around 90% negative feelings, things started happening for me, although things still did not happen as quickly as I liked because the majority of my thoughts and feelings were still working against me, I experienced some relief. This is what Abraham Hicks mean when they talk about the feeling of relief, and the reason why even feeling that little bit of relief from your negative feelings will be of such immense value to you. So always go for that sweet feeling of relief in all of the above. The source of your negative feelings does not matter. It does not matter whether your negative feelings in your current inner state stem from the past, present, or future events. They are still affecting your manifestations in the same unwanted way. The universe does not discern the content of your thoughts. This means that you can be feeling angry due to a misunderstanding and still affect your manifestations negatively. Or you can be feeling angry for a perfectly valid reason and still affect your manifestations the same way. As such, there is really no good, valid reason for you to keep holding on to those negative feelings. Negative feelings are negative feelings, and the awfulness you feel inside is letting you know that you are creating reality in an unwanted way. When you truly understand this, you will see that there has never been a time where the continued clinging on to negative feelings has been justified. Even if you're 100% right, all of those negative feelings will just go on to create your outer reality in an undesirable way. There is a reason why spiritual masters are called just that masters. These are the individuals who have managed to transcend their own negative feelings and achieve mastery over their own inner states, independent from outer circumstances. These are individuals who have realized that no matter how justified or right they are in the moment, there is no point in pouring more negative energy into pointing out something that is wrong or unjust in any situation. Put your energy into changing the situation if you can but give up the need to complain vent inform others about the situation. The more you fall into this trap of needing to correct perceived wrongs, the more you are affecting your own inner state, and hence your own outer manifestations. You may think that you are doing others a service, but the greatest disservice you are doing is to yourself. Are you willing to pay that heavy price? 
Be willing to walk away from situations that would throw your inner state into further turmoil, even if it means giving up the need to be right. I can't tell you how difficult this was for me to do this in the beginning. I had always seen myself as someone who stood up for injustice and perceived wrongs, someone who was being helpful in pointing out the mistakes of others. Then I realized that the biggest fool had actually been me. I was trying to go around changing my outer reality through my outer actions, not realizing that I had attracted those things that needed changing in the first place, rather than doing the inner work necessary to change my inner state. It is interesting but ever since doing all this inner work, very little in my outer reality has needed changing. It is as if all the people, events and circumstances that riled me in the past have fallen away by their own accord. I no longer come into contact with people and things that need changing on a daily basis, simply because I no longer attract them through my own consciousness. Ironically, doing the inner work actually led to the same eventual outer results but in a much more harmonious and sustainable way to have a reality in which nothing needs to be changed as I let go of more and more of my negative feelings. When I went from 100% negative feelings down to about 5% negative feelings or less most of the time, everything changed for me. I started picking up on this whirling of energy around me and feeling a sense of forward momentum as I was going about my day. This is not because I had picked up new skills or taught myself how to perceive the energy field around me, rather, when my own perception was no longer encumbered by false fears and negative worries, I was free to perceive through the eyes of Source as we are all meant to, everything became perfect and beautiful, with no need to change anything or anyone, even those that were previously at odds with me, I was at one with everything you too can experience this sense of inner momentum. It comes from having a willingness to tend to your inner state. It can happen to you this very moment if you allow yourself to give up the need to know everything and the need to be right. Readers often comment that they can pick up on my highly charged inspirational energy as they read my books. They can feel a sense of exhilaration, joy and positive momentum as they read, as if they are being propelled and uplifted to a higher place. This is by no means accidental, since I make it a point to write all my books from a place of joy and high energy, I get myself into that state before I write, it is also in this state where my own thinking is not clouded by my ego and my own limited perceptions, which is why words flow easily through me onto the pages, the reverse is true as well, when an author creates a piece of writing in a very sad and sorrowful inner state. The reader picks up on the intensity of those emotions and feels them through the pages. Will this affect the reader's manifestations? Absolutely. Anything that has the ability to change your inner states will affect your outer manifestations. If you allow yourself to remain immersed in that inner state for prolonged periods of time as you read certain parts of this book that resonate with you, you may have felt a sudden sense of joy and inner knowing. I often interpret this as goosebumps all over my body and a tingling of my spine, following by waves of good feelings all over myself. The feeling is not unlike that of having an orgasm, which is also a moment where people experience very little resistive feelings in their inner state. Have you ever tried worrying about money problems or other worldly concerns while you were having one? This is also the reason why an orgasm feels so good. Not because the nerves in your body are being stimulated in a certain way, but because you have momentarily let go of all the negative feelings and thoughts you have been holding on to previously. The feeling of relief you get is what feels so good. Sadly for most people, those negative feelings and worries come flooding back after that moment. So no, having an orgasm is not a solution for manifestations. Other more permanent and lasting methods to control your inner state are needed if you can feel a sense of joy and exhilaration as you read my words. You are well on your way to becoming more aware of the impulses and good feelings that the universe sends you on an ongoing basis. There is a greater part of you that is always connected to universal intelligence, and hence these impulses never stop. You are constantly led towards your higher good whether you know it or not. The only things you have to learn to do are, 1. To stop clouding your own perception with negative fears and worries, 
so much so that you are unable to receive these positive nudges from the universe, and, to to tend to your inner state, I come back to these points frequently because most people, especially in the beginning, will gloss over these two points for more advanced outer directed manifestation techniques. All of the advanced techniques will not work if you do not approach them with the right inner state. Here's something for you to try for the rest of today just for today. Be determined to walk around while maintaining a peaceful inner state. Keep checking in on how you feel. Be aware of outer situations that will throw your inner state into a turmoil and try to work around them. Be creative in avoiding them for example. If you know that reading a particular website will likely throw your inner state out of whack, or participating in certain conversations will likely make you unhappy, make a decision in advance to avoid them for the rest of today. When the situation comes up, you can simply walk away from it. Bob Proctor calls this advanced decision making, ADM. I engage in ADM in all the time to avoid having to deal with unpleasant situations that can affect my vibrations. If you know that being in a traffic jam upsets you, then make an advanced decision to set off earlier or take another route. These are simple changes that anyone can make to their lives to create huge results in their outer manifestations. Resist the urge to react and do what you've always done. Walk away from undesirable situations and give up the need to be right. It will be very difficult to do so in the beginning and I took months to implement all the long-term positive changes in my behavior, but the feeling once I had successfully done so was very empowering and liberating. The few months you take to tweak your life will ensure a lifetime of ease and joy. Some of the changes you can make in your daily life will be very simple and easily overlooked. Yet most people do not implement them due to a strong sense of inertia. I often found myself upset by the morning rush hour traffic on days I needed to commute to work early. Spending an hour or two cooped up in stop and go traffic was upsetting my inner state even before my day began, yet I accepted it as a normal part of my routine. As I began to look at ways to maintain a calm and peaceful inner state, I realized that I could simply set off two hours earlier and avoid all that morning rush hour traffic. Not only was my traveling time halved, I felt peaceful and good when I arrived at the office with lots of quiet time to spare. This was a simple change that had far-reaching consequences in my inner state and outer manifestations. Of course, there is always more than one creative solution to any issue and I encourage you to find one that works for you. For others, it may be as simple as filling their commuting time with meaningful audio programs so you learn something new every morning. Another small thing that inconvenienced me was the need to constantly re-tie my shoelaces as they became undone throughout the day. As someone who goes around in jeans and sneakers, I noticed that I spent a long time tying them in the morning just to make sure they were secure and had to retie them throughout the day. This was upsetting my flow of things and I was bothered each time I had to reach down and retie them. Fortunately, when you have an issue with something, it is also likely that many others had exactly the same problems and successfully overcome them. I did a quick search online and replaced all my laces with those that needed no tying, originally designed for marathon runners. I estimate that this simple change saves me 15 minutes a day and maintains my peaceful inner state. Now you may not be as affected as me by undone shoelaces or by the morning traffic, but chances are, there will be a few things in life that get on your nerves. Something that gets on your nerves is really affecting how you feel on the inside. So why allow it to bother you any longer? Make a list of the 3 to 5 daily inconveniences that annoy you the most and then come up with creative solutions to overcome them. As I've mentioned, the good news is that if things like this bother you, they would have bothered others as well and there is a good chance that someone out there has come up with clever ways to overcome them. Seek out these solutions and implement them in your own life. Chapter 7 There is no need to second guess the universe. We have established a few simple premises up to this point in the book. The first premise is that everyone can perceive and feel energy with no exceptions. It is an innate human ability and you do not need any special talent or prolonged spiritual training to do it. All of us are energetic beings at our core. 
If you felt a sense of joy or exhilaration while reading portions of this book, if you have felt inspired and nudged into action by an idea, that was you picking up on the energy flowing through you from higher consciousness, that was your unique interpretation of the energy and it would have felt just right for you. Most individuals who have not taken the time to examine these sensations dismiss them as mere good feelings or sensations running through their body, but there's so much more than what meets the eyes, skin, these feelings sensations hold the keys to effective manifestations different people perceive energy in different ways, for me, it is a tingly feeling running up and down my spine, often accompanied by goosebumps all over my body and a pleasurable slightly tingly buzzing sensation in my early days i felt a light vibration running through parts of my body as we become more attuned to perceiving this energy that has always been there we notice subtle details and differences in how this energy feels the good feelings deepen over time as we increase our subtle awareness of it this energy has a unique vibrational signature that we will always be able to identify and work with Identifying the unique ways in which the universe communicates with you will be very useful to your manifestation work. The second premise we have established is that the universe never stops sending these signals and impulses to you. We all have an always on, 247 connection to our universal source. When we are feeling scared or worried, we are not in a position to receive impulses and communicate with this universal source that is vibrating at very high energetic levels. However, once we let go of all our emotional baggage and negative thoughts, we immediately free up our channels to receive clearly from this universal source. Thus, the universe is always guiding us to our greater good, in a manner that is unique and instantly identifiable to us in my early days of doing this work. I was always waiting for the universe to communicate with me and send me nudges. I too, had read that the universe was always guiding us towards our greater good, but I did not understand the full significance of this spiritual truth. Thus, I often sat around and waited for the universe to send me signals and nudges. I once did so over the period of a few years, in which my life totally stagnated. Despite all my effort, I received nothing at all. I felt very little joy and lots of worry during that period in my life. Is it any wonder that the universe could not even get through to me? Each time I sat in stillness and attempted to receive these signals from the universe, I was actually filled with a deep sense of worry and fear on the inside. I was worried about my finances and about my future. If I had checked in on my inner state back then, it would very well have been 90-100% worrisome and fearful thoughts. Thus, understand that the universe has no way of getting through to you if your inner state is not conducive, because you are holding yourself so far apart from the higher vibrations of universal source. This is the basis of the law of attraction as we have mentioned earlier. The only way to bring yourself back into alignment with universal source and to start receiving useful impulses signals from the universe is to let go of, drop, all of your negative emotions and feelings on the inside. Only when you're able to go from 100% negative feelings to about 50% or less negative feelings will you have space freed up in your inner consciousness to receive such signals and impulses from the universe even the term receiving is a bit of a misnomer, since the universe is always sending you these signals and there is no need to receive anything. I remember one had to dial in during the early days of the internet. You may be familiar with it era too. When you had to log on to the internet using a slow dial-up modem, only after a successful dialing in would you be able to access the internet in your web pages. Today however, most of us are on and always on speedy DSL or fiber connection. We don't even need to be concerned about whether we are connected as the connection is always on. We let the connection run in the background even as we work on our spreadsheets, design our presentations and organize our photo libraries. As a result, we don't even realize which software programs require an internet connection. It is the same with accessing the infinite powers of the universe. We are always connected and there is no need to deliberately dial in when you need something done. However, you can become disconnected. The connection can become extremely slow choppy. 
If your pipelines are clogged with negative fear and worry thoughts, eliminate these fear and worry thoughts from your life and everything will run smoothly back when I was constantly worried and waiting for signals from the universe. I often perceived false signals that were actually generated by my ego. I would often get an impulse to do something or to go somewhere, which later turned out to be untrue or a false lead. I spent a lot of wasted time and energy chasing these false leads that turned out to be nothing. Looking back, I realized that it was my overly active imagination and ego generating all these false possibilities and ideas that were rooted in fear and limitation. I have noticed this phenomenon frequently in chronically worried individuals, just like how I used to be. A worrying mind is the result of an overactive imagination working towards the wrong purpose. Thus an overactive mind will often conjure up pseudo-solutions ideas that are actually based on its own fear-based thoughts and ideas. Many of those ideas I received were fear-based and nonsensical leads, because they were not really coming from the universe. Instead. They came from my ego which was merely rehashing all my fear thoughts and presenting them to me in new ways since I was so desperately waiting for signals from the universe. I acted on everything that came to me, on hindsight. I should not have done so. Here's an important lesson if you check into your inner state and find that it is filled with a large percentage of fear-based negative feelings. Then you should get yourself clear from those negative feelings first before acting on any impulses. Until you are clear of these negative feelings, there is a high chance that whatever you receive will not be from your higher consciousness. Instead, you'll be merely perceiving the energy of your own worrisome and fear thoughts. Applying this rule of thumb will save you lots of time and energy on your journey. A constant red flag that I always ignored back then was that nagging feeling of discord that was within me. Whenever I received one of those false leads, it would be accompanied by a sense of uneasiness or discord, as if I was not 100% sure on the course of action to take. This sense of uneasiness was actually a clear signal to let me know that I was not acting in accordance with my highest good. Thus, the second lesson here is that when an impulse really comes from your higher consciousness, it should be free and clear. You should not be feeling a single bit of uneasiness, inner discord or hesitancy. In other words, the universe always sends you a pure signal that is instantly identifiable by you. There will be no need to second-guess the signals you receive from the universe. Thus, if you receive an impulse that makes you question the path of action you need to take, it is probably from your ego and not from the divine. Once again, applying this rule of thumb will save you lots of wasted time and effort. The reason why most people act on their impulses despite feeling a sense of hesitancy or uneasiness about them is because they have not experienced how it feels like to receive a pure and clear signal from the universe. This was certainly the case for me at the beginning of my journey. Back then, I still had not felt these good feelings and sensations coming directly from my higher consciousness. Hence all I had to work with were my fear-based feelings of worry and limitation. I had no reference point of how something from the universe actually felt like. This might be the case for some of you as well, which is why I hope my written descriptions here will be useful to you. I hope that these written descriptions and narratives will allow you to pinpoint whether something is really coming from your higher consciousness or from your ego. I would like to give you an example of feelings impulses that came from my fear-based self and contrast it with one that came from my higher self. You should be able to see the parallels in your own life experience. The first is a business opportunity I felt led to invest in that really had nothing to do with my main business. Right from the beginning, I felt a sense of uneasiness and discomfort about the whole deal, that nagging feeling, but I still went ahead because it seemed to serendipitously appear in my life. After two years of spending an inordinate amount of time and energy trying to make things work, I finally had to walk away from the deal. What are some of the red flags in that case? First, it did not feel right from the beginning. Recall that when a sense of inspiration really comes from your higher consciousness, you should feel totally at ease with it. There should be no need to second-guess yourself and everything should feel right. The fact that I felt a sense of uncertainty was a sure sign that it was not from my higher consciousness. Second, 
I felt led to accept the opportunity because it seemed to serendipitously appear in my life, in other words, it seemed like the universe had orchestrated it and brought me to it, once again, be very careful about these false leads because there is an important lesson to be learned here, oftentimes, we will meet certain people in our lives or come into contact with certain opportunities for no apparent reason at all, it can appear to be a very serendipitous meeting. When someone just comes up to you out of the blue to hand you a name card or speak to you, these chance encounters are often mistaken for signals nudges from the universe. Please do not make this mistake just because someone or something appeared in your life suddenly does not mean it is a sign from the universe. It always should be accompanied with the unmistakable good feelings which you feel on the inside. If you'll combine the outer signs with your inner good feelings, then you can never go wrong. But if you only rely on the outer signs, then there is a high chance of going wrong, simply because your outer signs are the result of your past vibrations. Thus, you could have attracted those people things events into your life as a result of your unwanted past vibrations. This is an important point to note. For me, I mistook this business opportunity as a signal from the universe because it seemed so unrelated to my main business and the fact that I came into contact with it quite accidentally, but all of those alone do not count as signs from the universe. I emphasize this point here because many individuals have told me that since a particular opportunity came into their life out of the blue, then it must be a sign from the universe and they have to accept it. That can't be further from the truth. You could have attracted an event based on your dominant unwanted vibrations. So there is no need to blindly accept everything that comes into your life. You can reject opportunities and people that do not feel right for you, even if they appear in your life under seemingly serendipitous conditions. Knowing how to read and walk away from opportunities will save you from lots of unwanted detours later on. Chapter 8 How to Know If Your Manifestations Are Happening The ego is always projecting false illusory images onto our consciousness, these images are based on scarcity and fear-based thinking, steeped in the ego's purpose of keeping us safe from the world out there, during the first few years of my spiritual journey, I was often jumpy and looking for physical signs in the world out there, I was constantly misreading and projecting meaning onto external events and circumstances that really meant nothing at all, for example, I perceive the business opportunity which came to me suddenly as a serendipitous sign from the universe, when it was actually just a reflection of my own desperation and need to go do something therefore, if you check in on your inner state and find that you are constantly filled with fear-based thoughts and worries, that is a sure sign that you are not receiving pure and clear signals from the universe. The impulses you feel and the actions you feel compelled to take will be tainted with your own limited fear-based thinking, my best advice is thus to disengage yourself from all of those thoughts and to stop believing in them, do not act on anything until you get totally clear, and feel a clear, unadulterated signal from within, as mentioned in the previous chapter, the universe never sends you a signal that needs to be second-guessed as I've repeated over and over again in my book Allowing Divine Intervention. You will have a deep sense of inner knowing when you receive signals and impulses from the universe. This deep sense of inner knowing will be instantly recognizable and perceptible by you when it happens, so there is no need for you to decipher anything. Once again, I emphasize this point because beginning students of this material often go out there looking for signs, and end up reading all sorts of meaning into natural physical occurrences. The meaning that we project onto things comes from our ego mind, and not from our higher selves. Chasing after these false leads can lead to lots of unnecessary detours on our journey that can be avoided in the first place by following these simple principles. There is no need to force or rush anything. Give up the need to know where you're going and just let everything be. All is well it was only in the second half of my manifestation journey that I started receiving very strong signals and impulses from the universe. This is living from a state of inspiration as I've described several times in my books. This is also the state I had yearned to life from in the first half of my journey, but found that it constantly eluded me. 
My wanting to receive signs and signals from the universe was what was holding me back, because my wanting itself actually stemmed from a deep sense of worry and desperation. As I've described before, your wanting of something very often holds you apart from the thing that you want as I was meditating and visualizing one day. I suddenly felt a strong sense of inner knowing and confirmation, somewhere deep within me, I had the strong feeling that what I had asked for was already true, I had the strong feeling that it was already a done deal, I was very taken aback the first time this happened to me, as I had never felt anything similar in intensity to this sensation before, up till that point in time. I had always been fervently asking and visualizing my desires as if they were already true, while that provided me with a great sense of joy and exhilaration, and while I felt very realistically that what I had asked for was already true right there and then, the feeling was still different from that of a spontaneous inner confirmation the feeling of inner confirmation came from within, it was not forced, I did not deliberately conjure those positive uplifting and joyful feelings through the use of visuals or affirmations. Instead, at some point during my visualization, I had this strong inner sense that it was already complete and done. The feeling was so strong for me that I did not even doubt for a single moment that what I asked for was already here. This feeling intrigued me, and it is similar to the feeling I received while driving through the tunnel, as described in the opening chapter. In fact, I have come to recognize both moments as one and the same. Both moments are the universe's way of letting me know that everything was going to be all right and taken care of. I felt a deep sense of peace and assurance the moment I felt that sense of inner confirmation. Most importantly, the feeling of inner confirmation came from within, and was not due to any external stimuli or evidence. I have often written that the only journey one has to make is on the inside and that the very first signs of manifestation are always internal. In other words, it always seems as if nothing is happening on the outside, it always seems as if nothing is changing on the outside, and that things are the same. However, understand that what we observe in our outer reality is a reflection of our inner reality, it is the effect and not the cause. Therefore, when we cause a new reality to occur on the inside, it takes a while for the effects to be shown on the outside. Once again, most students mistake this nothing happening outside as a sign that they are doing things wrong, or that all these techniques teachings do not work. They get discouraged by the lack of results and give up, but understand that very often, things are happening, just not on the outside. We are simply not perceiving them in the correct way we have been trained to use our five senses to perceive the world around us. We depend on these senses so heavily to observe and interact with the outer world. Hence, when we first ask for something, it is only logical that we use our five senses to see if anything has changed in our outer reality. For most people, if they do not observe any tangible changes in their outer reality, they immediately conclude that the techniques have failed, when in fact, if they had bothered to look inside their inner world, they would be able to conclude that lots of things have started to happen indeed. This understanding is key to successful manifestations, because the universe always picks up on the sum total of your thoughts and feelings. Therefore, if you were feeling very optimistic about a new intention but immediately defaulted back to feelings of discouragement and negativity upon observing nothing happening on the outside, then the universe is picking up on those very feelings of discouragement as well. You can't just have the universe act on a particular type of good feelings and ignore the bad ones. The solution is to learn how to perceive your inner world with your inner senses. This is why the first part of this book is so important, because that was the part in which you learned how to perceive subtle changes in your bodily sensations. At first, you will not be very sensitive to changes in your inner world apart from feeling slightly different. For most people, all they can feel is a sense of polarity, good feelings versus bad feelings. But as you deepen your work and awareness in this area, you'll be able to feel many degrees of good feelings and more importantly beyond the good feelings to the various physical energetic sensations themselves. I often feel a sense of forward momentum, a swirling energy, a vortex of sorts when I am in alignment. 
This surpasses the usual feel-good feelings, and they are the result of placing my conscious awareness on my inner world most of the time instead of my outer world therefore, anytime you set an intention and work on it, the first thing you should be doing is to check on your inner reality, follow the techniques I have described in the first half of this book and check in, how do you feel about this issue in the now moment? Remember, the now moment is all that matters. So don't worry about the past or the future, ask yourself how you feel about what you've just asked for in the now moment, do you feel a sense of relief, do you feel better, or do you still feel as were it as before, if you still feel as were it as before, then you need to do some inner work to drop those worry feelings before any progress can be made for most people. Engaging in a simple visualization meditation exercise is sufficient to make them feel much better. Their vibration will be much improved as a result. When they check into their inner states, they'll find that instead of feeling 90% negative about an issue, their negativity has been reduced to only 10%. This improvement of 80% is actual evidence of your manifestation. Let me repeat this crucial point this 80% reduction in negative feelings in relation to the intention you have just set is actual tangible evidence that what you are asking for is on its way to you, it is not just something happening in your mind, it is way more powerful than that, it is all the real world, tangible, objective evidence you need to know that whatever you are asking for is on its way to you, and if you keep your negative feelings at that reduced level, or even make them go down to zero in relation to the item which you are asking for then the manifestation is a done deal. The manifestation is settled most people make the mistake of doing it the hard way, let's say after their visualizations or whatever techniques they're using, they still continue to worry about whether they have done it correctly, or if when it will happen, therefore, their negative feelings just went from 90% to 90%, which means no change at all in the way they are feeling, guess what, this means no outer manifestation results alternatively. Some individuals go from 90% to 10% negative feelings immediately after visualizing what they want. Then here's the killer they walk around for a few days, observe nothing happening on the outside and then shoot right back up to 90% negative feelings again most of the time. Guess what? They just regressed right back to where they started, which means taking one step forward and one step back. This is why we often end up peddling at the same spot and taking more time than we need with creative manifestations. If you have ever tried to tread water to keep yourself afloat, you'll know how tiring it feels. You're expending lots of energy just to keep yourself in the same place as I look back at the manifestations in my life. There were a couple that took a long time, years in fact. These were the manifestations that match the pattern I have talked about above. I would visualize and feel very good for a while, but then notice that nothing was happening on the outside and immediately revert back to my old feelings of negativity, worry and what if all this doesn't work. As such, the next time I did my visualizations again, I had to start off from ground zero and work from my old starting point of 90% negative feelings. Instead of my new and improved vibrational place if you wish to greatly accelerate your manifestation process, and this applies to any subject and anything you're asking for, you need to get your negative feelings low and stay there for most of the time. Now especially if you're asking for something which has been long in coming or perceived to be big, this can be difficult to do at once. You may go from 90% negative feelings to 20% immediately after you visualize, but quickly revert back to around 60%. That's still a good improvement from how you previously felt because you made a progress of 30 percentage points, so stay there at 60% for most of your time. The next time you do your visualization again, you'll start from that improved place of 60% negative feelings. Let's suppose that this time you go down to 20% again, then it rebounds to 40%. The next time you pick up where you left off, you'll start at 40% and keep going lower. You keep doing it until you get your negative feelings very close to zero. This is what will greatly accelerate your manifestations.
and you'll be making improvements instead of constantly peddling at the same spot sometimes. Certain material which we read helps us to improve our understanding and fine, tune our vibrations. This is the reason why I'm so passionate about writing this series of books, and even more passionate about helping others learn the process. I still devour many books related to this subject myself. I do so not in the desire of making things happen, but in the hope of fine-tuning my understanding and letting go of more resistance I have unknowingly picked up along the way. Sometimes the act of reading allows you to drop resistance as you reach a new place of understanding, without you having to actively do anything. When you go from 90% negative feelings to a lower percentage, you are letting go of resistance, if you'll keep at it. The things that you want will happen for you, period. There is no other way around it of course. The reverse is also true. If you keep yourself at high levels of negative feelings for most of your time throughout the day, you'll only attract negative events, people and circumstances into your life. You'll continue to do so. That's why you are always creating and always manifesting no matter how you feel on the inside. The only question is this do you want to create an endless supply of good stuff or an endless supply of bad stuff? Once you learn all these principles, you will become even more acutely aware of the need to continually tend to your inner state. Chapter 9, The Peaking Technique The feeling of inner confirmation is a deep sense of inner peace and assurance that something is a done deal. But instead of trying to feel and conjure up these feelings through the use of your imagination, this sense of inner confirmation arises spontaneously on its own. It is not forced. It arises by its own accord. When you feel it, you'll have a very strong, unmistakable feeling that something is indeed on its way to you. In the moment you ask for something, it is done therefore. Don't deliberately try to feel or conjure up a sense of inner confirmation. Don't try to make it happen. Instead, Use your inner senses and just notice your inner state after you have set an intention for something. What is your level of negative and positive feelings in the moment? Are you able to get those negative feelings down as close to zero as possible? When you are able to get your negative feelings down to zero and keep them there, magic and miracles will start to happen for you. The progress of most manifestations is often exponential in nature. At first, it seems like very little is happening on the outside. It seems like good things are slowly trickling in for you, but gradually, the trickle starts becoming a stream, and before long, you have a gush of goodness rushing your way that can't be held back. This is why most people are often amazed by how fast things turned around for them, when previously they have tried every single method humanely possible and still had no results. If you keep doing the techniques and mental exercises I suggested in this book, then I can assure you that the changes are indeed happening beneath the surface. If you resist the urge to constantly check your outer reality and keep the faith, then things will happen very fast for you. The moment you set an intention with determination, your inner reality immediately changes. This shift in inner reality is providing all the evidence you need that outer changes are soon to occur. It's like the tip of the iceberg. You can only perceive that little tip that is above the water surface, but there is more than what meets the eye beneath the surface. Therefore, the feeling of inner confirmation is a signal to you from yourself that you are finally going to receive whatever you have been asking for. It is a confirmation that you have let go of sufficient negative feelings and perceptions, such that you now have a clear and pure view of the whole manifestation process. The inner confirmation is positive proof that you are seeing from the eyes of Source, and seeing the world through the divine viewpoint of the universe when you have reached an inner state where there are very little negative feelings left. You are free, you'll not feel impatient, worried or desperate about your manifestations, you'll not be constantly fussing about, wondering whether you are doing the right thing or whether they'll be here soon, everything will appear so beautiful and peaceful for you. You'll not want to change this thing or the feeling a sense of inner confirmation is a natural consequence of letting go of the negative feelings that have bogged you down and prevented you from perceiving clearly in the past. When you let go of all the negative emotions that cloud your perception, you're able to see things the way the universe sees it. 
you'll be able to perceive the energy that is lined up behind your manifestations, and the energy that is moving all your manifestations into place. Most people often report feeling an exhilarating sense of forward momentum just before their physical manifestations occur. Those are more than just good feelings. Instead, they are tangible proof that something is happening. You can feel that sense of forward momentum because you are so in tune with the energy fields of the universe, and can feel things snapping into their rightful places. But all of this can only happen when you let go of your negative feelings and emotions. I would like to offer an exercise that will help you do so. Bear in mind that this is not a replacement for doing the inner work. You still need to check into your inner state a few times each day and drop any negative feelings that are there. However, this process can accelerate change as it can help you become more attuned to your inner world. This process will help you perceive your inner world state better as you do it more. I have described this technique in passing in my other books, but it is the first time I'm describing the peaking technique in detail here. The peaking technique is one in which you let your positive feelings emotions peak and then subside. What we are really doing when we follow the peaking technique is to intensify our positive emotions and to let go of all the negative emotions that bind us and keep us stuck in the same place. We are trying to create a new reality by really intensifying the positive emotions and letting go of, bringing down to zero, all the negative emotions that have held us back or led to unwanted manifestations in the past. This is also why right after you try the peaking technique, you may find yourself in a state of elation and with no negative resistant feelings. However, as time passes, you may find these negative feelings gradually returning due to prolonged past conditioning. That is when you must let them go again so that you can be at an improved vantage point. Here's how the peaking technique works. Make sure you're in a quiet place where you will not be interrupted and close your eyes. Take the necessary steps to ensure that you will not be interrupted over the next 10 to 15 minutes or so. By locking your door and switching off your mobile devices close your eyes and take three deep breaths. Don't just take the deep breaths for the sake of taking them, but feel the energy swirling all over your body. You are picking up on the very real energetic vibrations that are all over your body. Feel all of this powerful universal energy that is swirling around you. These may manifest as good feelings, tingly sensations or goosebumps all over your body, as we have covered in the earlier part of this book. These good feelings are your own unique ways of perceiving the energy field around you. Don't dismiss them as mere good feelings. Learn to recognize how they feel and to describe their exquisite character. Learn to notice the subtleties in how you feel, and notice if these feelings feel familiar to you. When have you felt them before? As you start to notice more details and subtleties in these good feelings, they will deepen for you over time. You'll be able to perceive more and more most people gloss over the first part and jump right into the second part I'll be describing shortly. But no, linger and stay for as long as you like at the first part. That is where all the magic happens, because in order to perceive all these good feelings and the energy field around you, you would have to in that moment, give up a considerable amount of resistance. You would have to drop a significant amount of your negative feelings in the moment. Try doing this exercise when you are feeling angry, resentful, or irritated. You'll find it next to impossible. In fact, while you may be able to take the three deep breaths, it may be very difficult for you to feel the positive sensations in your body at all if you're angry or distracted. This is because your perception would be clouded with negative feelings. If that's the case for you, set the exercise aside and do it again when you're in a better mood. A neutral mood is all it takes for you to reap the benefits from this exercise. As always, avoid doing any of these exercises when you are feeling strong negative emotions. Take as much time as you would like to feel these positive feelings and sensations all over your body. Don't worry if you are making things up or doing things right. There is no right way to feel all these positive sensations and feelings. I often tell others that there is no right way to accept all the goodness from the universe. Now there is a possibility that you will not feel anything at all when you start doing this exercise. You'll take three deep breaths and feel nothing. 
If that's the case and you're in a fairly neutral mood, it simply means that you have attuned yourself to an outer directed state of living and perceiving. You have become so accustomed to using your outer senses to perceive the world around you, that you have forgotten how to use your inner senses and abilities. People who have temporarily forgotten or never used their inner senses before tend to not feel anything when trying this exercise. If this happens to be you, then make it a point to try this exercise three times a day. Do not proceed until you can feel the positive good feelings and sensations running all over your body. Just close your eyes and try this exercise when you can for 5 minutes. You'll start making progress over the next few weeks and months. As you begin to shift your outer directed focus into your inner world once you manage to feel the considerable good feelings just from closing your eyes and taking deep breaths, it is now time to progress to the second step. In your mind's eye, just think about one intention desire you would like to manifest in your life. There may be many but resist the urge to work on multiple at the same time. Instead, for a start, just focus your attention on one intention you would like to manifest. Hold this intention in your conscious awareness by either stating your intention in the now moment, or imagining that it is so. For example, if you would like a particular object or desired outcome in your life, imagine that this outcome is so in the now moment. Imagine that this outcome is true for you right now as you are trying out the exercise. Feel the feelings associated with the fulfilled outcome right now. Some people may find it difficult to conjure up these feelings. So one way is to see yourself lying right there in your chair feeling happy and satisfied that everything has happened according to your intentions. See yourself as fulfilled and happy. This will also work in lieu of directly feeling the feelings of happiness and fulfillment as you take this next step. You'll find your positive feelings of joy, excitement and exhilaration increasing in your awareness. You'll feel a palpable sense of joy associated with the fulfillment of your desires. Feel these feelings in your body and feel them getting stronger. The law of attraction will make it easy for you to intensify these feelings. As you're now vibrating with a very pure and aligned intention, which draws to you more and more energetically related thoughts. Therefore, the longer you manage to hold this intention, the more intense your good feelings will be. Do not hold back and let your good feelings intensify if someone were to check into their inner state right at this moment. They'll notice that it is 100% positive with zero negative or resistant thoughts. This is a very magnetic state for manifestations. The whole point of this exercise is for you to intensify these feelings as much as possible or rather, feel those feelings increase and intensify themselves, until a peaking point. When I do this exercise myself, the good feelings become so intense that the feeling is almost surreal. I often feel my head muscles twitch involuntarily because I'm in such a state of ecstasy and joy. There is just so much pure, loving energy swirling around us and running through us that very moment for those who have not experienced such states of ecstasy before, they may immediately find themselves falling back to the ground. They may think that something wrong is happening, or something bad must be happening since they are feeling so good. Once again, if that is how you feel and negative thoughts start creeping into your awareness, simply set the exercise aside and repeat it again. In time, you'll learn how to let your good feelings intensify without putting a cap on it or having a sudden downward crash. Those caps are just self-imposed limitations we have placed on ourselves and there is no limit to how good you can feel. After keeping at this good feeling state for a while, it may seem as if a long time has passed, but my experience is that it only takes a few minutes, you may feel the good feelings culminate in what I identify as a peak. This is the highest point of your good feeling state, and it feels as if everything is so intense that things just cannot feel or get any better. Of course, this peak too, is self-imposed and it is merely how much goodness we can perceive at any moment. Therefore, as you regularly repeat this exercise, you'll find that the peak changes, and that you bring your good feelings to even greater heights. But there will always be a peak moment in each of your singular experiences when you feel the good feelings peak. It is as if all the good energy is running through you at full steam. You have not felt so good before in a long time, 
and these good feelings have never felt so real and intense, the peaking point will come naturally. Therefore, what I always do is to let these good feelings intensify until they reach a natural peak. When I feel that the good feelings cannot be intensified any further, I would then remain in that peak state from anywhere between a few seconds to a few minutes before those feelings begin to subside at the point when the feelings peak or shortly after, you will most likely feel a sense of inner confirmation. This is what I have described before as an inner click, where you can feel a shift take place inside of you, giving you inner confirmation that all is well, and that your manifestations are complete. The inner clicking point will coincide somewhat with the peak that you feel. After feeling that peak, you'll find your good feelings start to subside while simultaneously experience a sense of inner relief. It is as if you are being relieved of all the negative feelings, fears, worries and burdens which you have previously felt surrounding this manifestation. Because it is done, that point of inner confirmation has given you all the proof you need that the manifestation is now harmoniously complete. As you feel those intense feelings subside, you may experience a sense of motion, while keeping your eyes closed, as if you are drawn into something. Once again, this is your perception of the energy field around you. What most people feel after they experience the peaking technique is a sense of deep inner relief, peace and calm. If they check back in on their inner states, they'll find nil or very little negative feelings left inside them. What the peaking technique does is to take you on an inner journey and to show that you too can read and perceive the energy fields of your own manifestations. You too can feel when you are in alignment and when you are out of alignment. It is also a very useful tool to deepen your awareness and sensitivity of your inner state if done regularly. That's why I still use it on a daily basis, not to make anything happen, but simply because it feels so good. Chapter 10, Your Inner State Holds the Keys. Mere knowledge is not useful unless it is successfully applied to your life. As with all these spiritual truths, merely knowing and being able to repeat them to others is not enough. You have to do the inner work necessary to live these principles on a daily basis. You literally have to embody these universal principles in your daily life and make them a regular part of your life at this point in our spiritual journey. Your knowledge is complete. By this, I mean that you have the necessary technical knowledge and know how to make all of this work in your life. You have the necessarily tools and bodily functions to make this work. You know how to direct your mind to a useful end. So the next step is to integrate this material at the level of your being. I started off by describing a spontaneous feeling of inner confirmation I felt one day, before explaining how the feeling came about. We have also learned that these feelings go beyond just mere good feelings and sensations. They are literally our bodies picking up on and perceiving the energy field around us. As we become more attuned to these energetic vibrations, we will be able to feel our manifestations moving into place and know how far along we are in our manifestation journey. We will be able to obtain inner confirmation even when it seems like nothing is happening on the outside. All of this cannot be forced, but instead has to be cultivated. To start off, make it a point to check in on your inner state several times a day. This practice does not have to be time consuming, as you can easily notice how you're feeling in just a few seconds no matter where you are at, much like obtaining a temperature reading. If you will do this over the next few days, you'll find yourself adopting the stance of a curious observer. You'll start to understand why things have been happening for you the way they did. Taking time to check into your inner state a few times each day will show you the reasons why certain conditions have continually showed up in your life. Are you always feeling worried and fearful, or joyful and positive? By checking on your inner states, you'll be able to tell objectively whether you are indeed positive on the inside or whether you have only been using outer, directed positive words and actions once you have taken readings of your current inner state, you are now in a much better position to change it one bit at a time if desired. Stop trying to pile on all the manifestation techniques without making the necessary inner changes. It all starts first from the inside. Make a deliberate effort to lower your negative feelings down to zero. 
and stay there for longer periods each time, the more you're able to let go of the negative feelings that have been bogging you down, the more freedom and lightness you'll feel. Also, the more you attempt to use your inner senses to perceive your inner state, the more adept you'll become at this way of inner sensing. Very soon, you'll be able to notice subtle textures and details in the way you feel on the inside. You'll pick up on very exquisite changes in emotions and the beauty that is inherent in your inner state. All of this work deepens as you try it more and more each day. That's why there is truly no limit to how good this gets, or how good you can feel finally. I encourage you to try the peaking technique that allows you to quickly go to a state of zero negative emotions. It is in this unencumbered and limited state that you'll be able to feel your alignment with universal source energy extremely powerfully. If the exercise is too overwhelming for you at the beginning, do a portion of it each day until your body is attuned to the energy flowing through you. It is perfectly alright to break the technique down into several steps, going as far as you can each time. Your continued practice of the peaking technique will develop a sensitivity in you for the energy that is flowing through you. You'll be able to work and interact with this energy in a much deeper way. You'll find, as I have found, that no words or external physical evidence is necessary once you have set an intention for something. Very often, I receive energetic signs that my manifestations are on their way and feel the forward motion of things falling into place, even before any physical evidence appears for me on the outside when you get to a stage where you can truly feel the forward momentum and the expectancy, that is when things have to happen for you, you have reached the tipping point where so much momentum has been set into motion, that it is impossible for your desired good not to come to you, but you can only reach this tipping point if you learn to use your inner senses resourcefully and keep your focus on what is desired, rather than what is undesired you may not have seen yourself as a particularly spiritual or intuitive person much less have the ability to perceive energy. This book takes the first small step in showing that you too, are a talented energy reader. At our most fundamental level, we are energetic beings constantly perceiving, shaping and moving energy through the power of our focused thoughts. When you finally recognize your sacred role as an energetic creator, you begin to pay more attention to how you shape the energy field around you and you use the unlimited stream of universal energy that is available to you in every moment with more reverence and respect. You do not squander it on negative feelings and emotions. Knowing how powerful a creator you are it is my intention that you finally awaken to this true power within you and create the life you have always desired with love and blessings. No break space. Richard Dots.